Hello. Hey, hello, hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am great. How's my uh, audio? Um, it sounds good for once. Not like your audio has been bad in particular, but a lot of people that come on and chat have very bad audio, so this is fine. Yeah, uh, people seem to uh, get on with like a laptop mic or a headset mic mm -hmm. for some reason. <laughs> it's like just, I don't know, just buy a cheap ass microphone or it's a real one, XLR one. Yeah. I don't know. Well, hey, what's up? Do you want to introduce yourself to the chat? Why are you sweet? Why are so many of my fans Swedish? I feel like so many people reach out to me from Sweden. It's kind of weird, but wait, you are Swedish, uh, I right? I don't know. Yeah, I'm Swedish. Okay, make sure we're Norwegian. Well, okay, can you hear that I'm Swedish? Okay, now I definitely can. Yeah, okay, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to. We Swedes are pretty weird with our accents. I feel because we can, we sort of have to choose our power level. Yeah. So. Some of us, some of us just go full on, you know, full on Swedish, and uh, some of us go like, "Yeah, I'm pretty much from America," uh -huh. you know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, some of us do this one, and we do the uh, the UK they, one. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't think I've heard that one. I, most of the time I've spent has been like in Stockholm, though. So usually it's fairly Americanized. Um, yeah, I went pretty far north for skiing once. I don't even remember the name of the place, but um. Yeah, that place sounded pretty weird, but yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, how's it going? What, um, you want to introduce yourself? So tell everybody why you reached out to me, all that good stuff. Yes, so uh, I'm uh, called Disco Doomer on uh, YouTube and Twitter, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I do. I'm a journalist, uh, a professional journalist, and a pro journalist student from Sweden. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recently started a channel which I. I was planning on doing like fact checks and uh, interviews, basically, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on YouTube personalities and uh, uh, or streamers, I guess. Uh, so yeah, and I, I really sort of just wanted to not uh, do any kind of debatey or uh, anything like that conversation. More just. Like picking your brain and asking about stuff that I feel like you don't talk much about, at least on uh, at least on YouTube. Uh, that's where I watch your your content. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so uh, and uh, like <laughs> uh, when uh, the whole um, uh, quarantine started, uh, or quarantine, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, I. I had a lot of time on my hands, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I started watching uh, you f from like the most recent stuff. So this is like three, maybe four months ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and I st just wa started watching backwards and uh, watching some of the recommended stuff. So some of the questions are related to like, uh, like you did a kill stream recently but like the one before that so like 2017 mm -hmm. so i might be jumping all over the place in your mind but just so you know where i got my like uh, information from yeah okay gotcha whatever. i'll try to clarify at the beginning of a topic where i currently stand because my st stances um change sometimes depending on what's going on yeah, yeah of course mm -hmm. uh yeah uh, so I, I guess my my first topic uh, was gonna be a thing where people accuse you a lot of using uh, debate tactics. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they do it as much anymore. Do you feel like oh, yeah. that's... Uh... Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. So my first question is, what do you think those debate tactics are? Or what do you think people think they are, <laughs> I guess? Um, I mean, I think people think that I'm trying to trick them or trap them into saying things that they don't truly believe. Is that succinct enough, or does that work? Or oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or just uh, what do you what do you think when people say that you have debate tactics? What do you think? Uh, what do you think they think that they are like? Uh, maybe um, yeah, saying things that you don't believe or. Oh, that I mean, that's as much as as I would ever say. Um, I mean, like, because people use words, like they'll say, like, "Oh, you gish gallop or straw man," but I don't think they actually know what that means. Um, so, like, people have made like those accusations, but they, 
I mean, I, I don't know if people know what those mean or why they say that. So, I mean, I think I know why people say it is because they feel like people are being tricked into saying things they don't actually believe. But you know, people throw out all sorts of weird words to describe what I do sometimes. Mm hmm. Uh, and this so sort of a uh, connected question: Have you ever had any like media training or gotten tips from anyone on what to on how to uh, sort of uh, uh, carry yourself? Um, I mean, I've made like some friends that like give me tips sometimes on like how I should do certain things. So I mean, like yeah, I try to listen based on who talks to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, what would some of those tips be? Um. <clears throat> Uh, one useful tip was um, there's a guy that I talk to sometimes on my stream. His name is Stald, and he used to work for media, and he did a lot of interviews, and he told me one tactic sometimes when you're talking to somebody is if you ask them a question, um, after they respond, don't say anything. Just be quiet, and the person will usually volunteer more information, which is something I've done every now and then. I think it's interesting that people will, because people are uncomfortable with silence, so they usually try to fill the gap. Um, yeah, usually like small things like that, I guess. Hmm? Yeah, that's a like classic tip that we got like first year mm -hmm. journalism tip for sure. Yeah, um, and so that and that's uh, part of my uh, first question because I see that people, or to me at least, it, it tends to be that people say, uh, "Oh, you liberals" or something, mm -hmm. and then you say, "What does liberal mean to you?" and people think that you're trying to trap Tra them yeah. with that? Yeah, dumb shit like that. Yeah, people will get really mad when I ask. Oh, yeah, because sometimes I'll d it depends on the conversation you watch. People are have varying levels of idiocy when it comes to this. But if I ask for clarification on what a term means, you're oftentimes they'll edition. walk back to like, oh, you know what that means. You're just trying to trap me or whatever. But I'm just because I don't. Because if you say lefty, that can mean anywhere from like center left liberal in the United States to like communist socialist, like supporter of the USSR tanky. But yeah, people get really mad sometimes if I ask for clarifying questions. Yeah. What do you think that is? Um, are you asking like why I think people do that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think that I think that fundamentally, um, I think that a lot. Um, if if there are like if we assume that there are five layers to a topic, where the fifth layer is the most um, is the most like direct layer. So the fifth layer might be like killing is bad i think that and and like the zeroth layer might be like oh this is what i believe good is like so we go all the way from zero to like get more and more fine until we get to like layer five or whatever i think that the vast majority of people that talk about politics are on layer five and some of them might be on layer four um, and when i ask a clarifying question um, sometimes it feels like i'm trying to get a little bit more at like layers like two or three and people immediately become agitated because they haven't spent any time thinking about that so they feel like um, because most people just automatically agree um, so, so when i'm asking questions about that they feel like i'm trapping them or tricking them or I should obviously already be on the same page so it feels like I'm luring them or trapping them um, into saying something that they don't actually believe is that's like the feeling that I get yeah um, that's actually sort of what I was going to get to as well that uh, I have a problem or uh, that's the thing with like media training and what's that's what I sort of appreciate with the with your um, uh, rhetoric mm -hmm. uh, or how you how you how you choose to talk i guess that uh, because politicians will never s say anything about something that they don't know about mm -hmm. uh, except for like <laughs> trump i guess i don't know yeah. uh, th th that gets uh, weird fast about that but like mostly politicians and media trained people tend to not uh, divulge information that they either they'll just say that I, I don't know uh, and that's where I appreciate that you you do that as well and I think that people don't see the power in that if you know what I mean in saying that you don't know something or yeah oh sure you're saying most media people won't say that yeah uh, or at least like media trained people because um, because if you either lie or don't know anything, people will probably find out mm -hmm. uh, fairly fast. And then it's just better to say, I don't know, uh, because 
you can't be held accountable uh, to anything if you say, I don't know. Sure. Although the feeling of looking weak, though, is something that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that seems to be, like, the biggest uh, problem. Like, not knowing or not having an opinion about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's weakness. W what do you think that is? Um, I think there's a bit of ego involved. Like, to, to admit that you don't know something makes you look a little bit weak. And people don't ever want to be in that position. So it's better to just feign knowledge. Um... Yeah, I, I had um I actually just did an interview yesterday that was a little bit aggravating for me. Um, it was a guy running for Congress, and I try to like, like I usually like in my interviews they they tend to be quite a bit longer form than what would normally be like in media. So like I might talk to a candidate for like thirty minutes or an hour or something or two hours even depending on the conversation. Um, and I and I would ask like, hey, like what do you plan? Um, so a question might be, how do you plan to talk to the people that live in this area when a lot of them are you know way different than your political opinions right he's in a very red area and he's a blue politician and like the question is like oh well i'll just use common sense and it's like <laughs> okay that's you're not really answering my question at all but okay um yeah people do stuff like that quite a bit but, yeah. yeah uh yes and uh, actually this was a uh part of an, another like not a not a debated video but i think it it was you giving, giving a chat advice on dating i think mm -hmm. uh and it, it's it was those uh, because those are also very handy like basic journalistic things uh like oh what do you mean by this and you know the the six questions who what where when why and how mm -hmm. And that you can get, you can go far with just doing that. And people have a tendency of not like asking one of those questions, even. Sure. Mm. Are you talking about just like the conversation tips that I was kind of giving, or? Yeah, or that like journalists use that and how it's useful, like in it, it can be applied in normal conversation as okay. well. Uh, and uh, yeah, that that I I don't see many people doing that, or people s seem to not want to figure out what people mean by things. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, that that nobody clarifies anything. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have um, <clears throat> I love her to death, but um, I have a my girlfriend is Swedish. Um, and I notice this is actually, it's not just her, a lot of foreign language people do this and I understand why they do it, but it triggers the ever living fuck out of me. Um, I'm very patient and I will explain anything. I love explaining things. It, it's it ego boosts me, even if it's something very simple. So if somebody asks me to explain something, I'll always take the time to do it. But I notice when I talk to a lot of foreign language people, I'll say a couple things and I can tell that they didn't quite understand what I said, but they're trying to like use context clues to figure out what the word means. And sometimes you can go very far down a conversation and then they have to sound like, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait. What did you mean when you said this? Because I don't, and that, yeah, I notice that people do that sometimes, yeah. Um, so uh, this next point is also sort of with uh, uh, media uh, or handling media pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's going all the, all the way back to 2017 with the, uh, uh, the CP allegations. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you, do you want to talk about that at all or, uh, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Go for it. yeah okay. Good. good. Yeah. Cause I, I think it was the, I think it was the kill stream from 2000, like new years, almost mm -hmm. 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, um, one thing, um, that you did there was that you, you just said, yeah, that was pretty fucked up. I shouldn't have done that. I, I probably, uh, or I won't do it anymore. Um, and wait, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, wait. Let's clarify what we're talking about here exactly. <laughs> okay, because I never like fucking traded child porn or anything, and I didn't. Okay. <laughs> no, I, uh, wait, yeah, wait, hold on, yeah. What? Let's be a little bit more clear in terms of what we're talking about here, okay? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, or, uh, do you do you want to explain? Because uh, I've been so in it for like three months, mm -hmm. so if people aren't familiar. Uh, do you do you want to like you you could probably explain it faster than I can? Yeah. Oh, so basically the um 
basically what happened was some girl was like trying to be flirty with me on Skype and she sent me pictures of herself in like a swimsuit and then I find out that this girl's like 16 and I'm talking to other people in my um, in my Skype group because we're all we all go to like MLGs and stuff because we're Starcraft players and I you know I show them the picture I'm like dude you get these fucking 16 year olds are fucking crazy you gotta be careful at events like that you don't like end up like fucking minors or some shit and then people took that as that like I'm like some child predator or some shit or that I'm like actively seeking out 16 year olds or something is um yeah that thing yeah uh, so, so what you did there was to uh, basically, I guess, um, like by you, you, you just said, yeah, yeah, that was bad. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have, uh, or I could have handled it differently, or something. Yeah, sure. And then, yeah. and then what happens is that they they can't really do, uh, or the people who are trying to get you with mm -hmm. that information can't really do anything oh. with that state. Yeah, you diffuse the fuck out of it. A better example of this is um, I did like a very, very, very drunk stream a long time ago with um, somebody. Uh, her name was Mia Rose or whatever. And I was basically like grabbing her boobs and stuff on stream because I was like fucking wasted out of my mind. And if anybody ever brings that up, I'll like, yeah, that was really dumb. I shouldn't have done that. Like, it was really wrong. I shouldn't have. It was stupid. But usually if I just say that, like, you can't keep harping on it. Like, you kind of just, if you own it, and you say, yep, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. And you move on. Um, yeah, rather than like, if you try to like defend, I, I find this in general, like, if you try to defend fucked up shit you've done, you're going to end up like getting called on it over and over and over again and you're always going to get fucked for it it's better to say like oh yeah that was a mistake i shouldn't do it again and then you move on from it yeah yeah mm -hmm. so so what i wanted to ask you was uh, i don't know if you've seen uh, this is just a recent example with like the the shane dawson stuff oh i that. haven't followed at all apparently he's like a big youtuber or whatever and shit got crazy with him or something yeah yeah uh so uh, or, or this this basically I, I think applies to like all youtubers who do the apology video <laughs> mm -hmm. um that like, how that's the sort of anti way of handling it uh from what you did or done i, I don't know are you talking about where um, people go like um i'm sorry but and then they try to like argue why what they did wasn't that bad or they try to give excuses or yeah exactly mm hmm yeah, I've like uh, I think I've done like a decent amount of reading, and I have a decent understanding of like what makes for like a good apology versus a bad apology. Um, uh, one one thing I learned, man, dude, the I, the only book I've ever read on social interactions um, was a book by Dale Carnegie called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Have you ever heard of this book? Oh yeah, uh, that's uh, it, that's the movie. Uh -huh. No, 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 that's another movie uh, with the uh, oh, what's it called? Fuck. Now, how to lose friends and uh, distance. No, oh, somebody made like a parody yeah, I, I, movie about this. No, I know what you're talking about. I feel like um, how to lose friends and alienate people. Yeah, there was a movie oh, yeah, that yeah, a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, yeah. I never actually watched yeah, this, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I yeah don't rem I've heard of that book. Please. Yeah. yeah please. I don't remember if I took this piece of advice out of that book or if it was something else that I learned really, really early in life. Um, but I learned very early in life that when you use the word but, you destroy everything that came in front of that sentence. So you can't ever do that. So like if I say like, listen, I'm really sorry that I treated you in some way, but anything I say after that basically completely invalidates Drunk like the first part off. of my um, of my sentence. So yeah, you have to be really careful. Um, yeah, crafting apologies is something that like, it has to be done in a very formulaic manner. And a lot of people don't know how to do it. And it surprises me when I see like big media people sometimes or people that should know better will come out and say like, oh, um, like, listen, guys, I'm sorry that I did this. However, you should know that at the time I was in this state of mind and this person did these things to make me do it. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, this isn't an apology. This is you defending what you did. I don't know how you don't see the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's actually... Uh, why, do, why do you think that they, they do it that way since they should have, they, they should have like a media person i don't i never understood that i truly 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 believe that i could work as like a like a, like media pr for a lot of major companies where major companies will make these statements and i'll be like what the fuck what are you thinking fuck i wish i could remember these offhand but like we'll read these statements and i'm like this is a this is a horrible statement why are you doing this like there's so many flaws like you should be doing that like yeah i don't know it actually truly blows my mind sometimes that there are people in positions where they should know better and they just they say really stupid things um i have i don't know you, maybe you, if you say you're studying journalism maybe you'll know but yeah i don't know sometimes the 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 appalling apologies that come out sometimes from certain people or how fucked up some things are are just really really stupid sometimes i don't understand yeah because mm. yeah, um, uh, actually one of my teachers um, 
uh, for radio. She made an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- like one time, she had um, she had found out that a politician had done. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what, but then she came onto the radio show and she was gonna do like a big reveal thing mm-hmm. uh, live, like where she accuses her and so on. And then uh, she was, oh yeah, so you did, did this. And then the politician went, yeah, that was bad. I, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have known better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, and because we, we, she showed us the radio clip and it was just silent for a bit. And then, yeah, so, 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 yeah, so you, you what, what you did was bad. Yeah, I agree. It was bad. Mm-hmm. And that, that was it. And, and like, like, so trying to like put someone on the spot and when that doesn't work because they diffuse the situation like that is like the most Shut the fuck efficient up, Moosin, right? way it's to do it I feel like I, I, I really like I like you school. said I don't understand Just why kidding. we have fuck these you. 40 minute apology videos all the time yeah well a 40 minute apology video is oftentimes not an apology video more often than not it's going to be a defense of the actions it's the problem yeah yeah. Um uh, have you um like uh, have you interacted with like bigger YouTubers? Um tangentially, but not generally. Not not usually, no. Like it'll be because they're like a friend of a friend, but I don't have any relationships with big YouTubers, not really no. Okay. Yeah, cuz I was curious if if you knew if these people have media people or not. Very 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 rarely. Um, I don't think so. Even people with, like, agents and stuff t- tend to not have any media training, no. And, like, in the in this world, people still have access to their own social media accounts and shit, so they can post and say a bunch of dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, pr- that's pretty strange to me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um... part of the appeal of, like, streamers and the way that, like, the kind of the parasocial relationship works is that you have direct access to somebody. Um, and media training can kind of put a barrier between you and an authentic interaction with a fan, right? So it's probably why you don't see it as much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, um, uh, follow-up question. Do, do, uh, how, like, how will you handle uh, that? And uh, do you think that's why you've never, like, been uh, cancelled, cancelled? Why have I never been cancel canceled? Oh no! Do do you think that's be, or that's because you've handled the situations like yeah, that was pretty dumb. I shouldn't have done that. Do you think that's part of why you've never been like super canceled? Um, I mean, I don't think I've always handled situations like that. I think I've, I think I've handled some situations in the past like exceedingly horribly. Um, for instance, I used a racial slur against a Korean guy in um in my StarCraft two ga- days, and I um. Um, I said that I didn't know the guy was Korean when I said it, so it was okay. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I've, I don't think I've always been, like, on top of, like, responsible social interactions, not even close, um, or, or responsible ownership or whatever. I think as a, I think the reason why I kind of have survived has just been, like, a, a combination of me being relatively intelligent and then me being very lucky and that my social views have kind of evolved with the times such that I've always stayed, like, slightly ahead of where I should be. Um, so I, I've, like, made it on those grounds, I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, like I said, I've just watched like from from now till 2017, so I have no idea. What, oh yeah, so uh, you've caught like for the most part, you caught like a pretty well behaved destiny, um, and haven't seen any of my more stupid blunders. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah, the first thing I saw uh, when when was the John Tron debate? Oof, was that 2017? Maybe. Okay. I I think I saw that back way back when mm-hmm. and like oh destiny is a streamer i'm <laughs> i'm such a boomer i'm like okay mm-hmm. so what's the... <laughs> i didn't i didn't even understand like what why is this conversation happening right now yeah yeah um oh, that has nothing to do with anything um oh yeah speaking of debates i wanted to ask you sort of about the uh, the the leftist debates or the lefty arc that people like to say yeah um, because 
Ähm. Ähm. Yeah, so maybe not just with leftists, but be just because th those have been like the recent, more recent ones that I've seen. But wh what's your biggest problem with with those kind of debates that you've had? Um. So my biggest problem was that I felt like lefties, for the most part, aligned with me on a lot of positions. But then I kind of found out that like lefties basically have their own political clubs, the same way that like alt writers have political clubs online. That people don't really think about any of their positions. They don't really spend any time like reading or researching anything they believe. And that at the end of the day, they're all just paying lip service to some ideology that they kind of sort of believe in, but not really. But they do it because they like get access to their kind of like online clubs, and then they feel good because of that. And that really, really, really bothered me. Yeah, uh, what, what what did you think like the the similarities were to you? What made me think that what? Uh, uh, what what were the sim uh, similarities to you? Oh uh, well, like our policy positions tend to be quite similar. Oh oh, sorry. Uh, similarities between those kind of left debates and those those kinds of uh, alt right debates. Oh well, just like just like general ignorance of people, I guess. Like a lot of the lefties that I talk to, like don't have like even like super ultra basic understanding of like economics, or they um, are just like yeah, like really really clueless about anything they talk about. <laughs> um, they exhibit a lot of the same like personality traits. Um, so for instance, like claiming that, like, uh, if you say like one thing that doesn't match their ideology, then it's because you're either like, um, I guess instead of like hating white people, they would say you're either secretly racist or hate poor people or some shit. Like, I don't know, just like a lot of like dumb shit like that. And so, um, um, more of, um, not, not really policy. Uh, disagreements or anything, but just like the the aesthetic of you is wrong to them, maybe. Um, a little bit, or more like they they seem to be focused almost exclusively on aesthetics. And um, I thought it was more policy related, I guess. Mm. Um. So one thing I noticed while watching um, uh, some of the debates. Mostly, uh, or not mostly, I should say, but uh, some of the ones that just ca came in uh, my mind was the ones with uh, Pixie or uh, P X E I E. Yeah, Pixie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pixie, yeah. And so the like the Biden sex allegations. Yeah, the uh, the, stuff. Yeah, yeah stuff. The, like the Black Lives Matter and voting thing. Mm -hmm. um, so w what if? And one of the ones that I also thought about was the um, the just move one, uh, oh, which yeah. what, didn't it, it didn't really start out as a debate. I think it was you just you talking to chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of these things, at least to me, it seems to be that uh, I feel uh, people are seeing or they they're seeing what you're saying and like understand how it might look bad or sound bad but they're not really hearing the words that you're saying um sometimes or they kind of like make assumptions about what it is that i mean and then um yeah we kind of go from there yeah sometimes depending on the type of argument um it could be a very uncharitable reading sometimes driven on by how hyperbolic i'm being to be fair but yeah yeah because uh, and it was the same thing with the uh with the subscriber. I don't know if those were lefties. Uh, no, I don't like think the, those were as much lefty debates, just general. Yeah, yeah like the, uh, the the $5 subscribe thing. I don't know. I remember the streamer's name. Um, uh, Invader V. Okay. Yeah, like the whole... But, oh, yeah, you... you <laughs> I don't know. Just to me, the, the, the statement, you can probably afford a $5 sub. Mm -hmm. And then, like... That's all. That's all of the rest of the videos for like two weeks are just about that and debating people about that. And I don't really, I don't understand what there is to debate about. How do you feel about it? Um. So another thing that people do. Um. Are you familiar with the difference between like um. I'm trying to think. 
Uh, are you familiar with the difference between like a prescriptive and a descriptive statement? Uh, how things should be and how things um, are, are. Yeah, people will oftentimes take like a descriptive statement and they'll run to like instantly. They instantly have those linked with prescriptive statements, even though they're not necessarily. Um, or people will w w people don't understand probability, <laughs> which is also something that's very irritating to me. Um, so like in both ways. So I might say something like. If, you, if you're watching Twitch for six hours a day, you probably have $5 extra to subscribe. That's just a fact. That's true. But people will say, oh, so you think that if you're watching, you should subscribe? Well, no, I didn't say that, okay? I didn't say that, but people will jump there. They, they assume that you're making the prescriptive half of that statement. Well, you're not necessarily, right? Now, nah, you could be leading to it or whatever, but like you're not necessarily saying, like if you're just making the description, like if you're watching Twitch for six hours, you probably have five extra dollars, okay? Chances are you do. So there's that that one end where people will link the prescriptive and descriptive without necessarily needing to. Um, and then the second one is people also won't understand probability. Like if you watch Twitch for six hours a day, you probably have five dollars for it. Well, what about a homeless guy that just has a tablet and some internet paid for by his children or whatever, who's like mentally disabled? who's outside and he watches twitch streams because he has nothing else to do it's like okay like that's there might be people that do that but this is not the average twitch viewer um i noticed that those two issues play a lot into my conversations and you and honest to god like people ask me all the time like what are your best um what are your best like political debates very few i have very very few good ones i've had maybe two good ones in literally the five years i've done this 99 percent of my conversations are usually trying to explain these very 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 basic things like how do you read a study um how, you know what does it mean when it says most people or 60 percent of people are likely to like or how do you interpret a graph that's the vast majority of what i do but yeah the, the, i'm sorry those two things play into the in, into that argument a lot people not understanding probability and people linking like oughts with is's or are yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. i i haven't i haven't watched the the whole thing but the latest um, latest modern day debates you were on mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, bosh i yeah. thought that was that was that was one of the funniest moments of all time to me when he hadn't uh, i don't remember their names striker maybe and, he, um, and when um, he had read the study <laughs> that he was uh Citing oh, he didn't even read the whole uh, fucking abstract. Yeah, he just Googled it and found the abstract and thought it agreed with him. And he started reading like the first fucking, yeah, two sentences. And he didn't realize that the next two like disagreed with the point he was trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so this is a, a self plug moment, I guess. This is sort of what I'm going to do with my channel. It's going to be a lot of looking at YouTubers' uh, statements and just like doing. Doing a sort of basic fact check. I'm trying to keep my videos under like 10 minutes, but just doing like, a, oh, how probable is this statement? Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like there's not a lot of that, and uh, I think it's it's lacking. I don't know. It, I don't know if people feel, um, uh, how do you say? Um, um, this is a weird way to put it, because, but I can't remember the word right now. But people don't feel like afraid enough of being wrong. <laughs> oh, we can use a word called shameless. Um, oh my god, you're you're a dumb fuck. What is wrong with you? Sorry. Um, people, I noticed this, and it actually drives me fucking crazy. And I had a very small arc where I start where I started doing this, and I might still be on this arc, but basically. People will just fucking lie. They don't give a fuck. They will just make up shit like crazy. And um, it is really fucking weird. Um, where somebody will set a study that's either totally incorrect or somebody will just um, totally fucking make some shit up or whatever. And their audience has never hold them to it or fact check them or anything. And yeah, that shit drives me fucking crazy. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and speaking of... Um um uh, speaking of uh, that i i really enjoyed the latest like investigation videos that you've done uh with the uh with oh the, the sexual assault uh, stuff yeah. yeah 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 like the uh the investiny stuff um yeah uh, because i i feel like there's a lot of good like journalistic practices in there that i really appreciate as a journalist uh just you know a lot of looking at Looking at all the stated facts, uh, drawing conclusions, like it, it feels like sort of the same as in uh, in law, mm -hmm. uh, like pro proving proving intent, yeah. you know, and so on. 
Something that really drives me crazy about a lot of the sexual assault stuff is people don't realize how much work goes on behind the scenes um, when journalists come out with these sexual assault allegations. Like a lot of people legitimately think that for like Bill Cosby or for Weinstein, like basically one woman goes to the press and says, hey, this guy raped me. And, the, and then they print it immediately without doing any fact checking. A lot of people think that that's how it's done behind the scenes. And that drives me crazy because there's so much work that goes into like proving these allegations and getting corroborating witnesses and account statements from different people and like getting different ac accusers and everything. Uh, yeah, people definitely underestimate how much work goes into that shit. Yeah. Because I, I, I thought of that already back in the um, uh, Tara Reid, uh, one of the Tara Reid videos where uh, New York Post maybe made an article mm -hmm. um, uh, where, where they, they uh, how many, do you remember how many people they called uh, about the... Uh, Oof, I don't know if I read the New York Post, Post one or maybe you're, you might be referring to the one that Vox made where, um, where Vox literally says um all the work that they went through trying to corroborate the story i think it was called the troubling story of tara reed um but but i i did read through that one we might have read the new york times one but um yeah where basically they tried like really hard to reach out um to all these people to corroborate witness accounts and everything and how the stories had changed and tara reed changed her story and new people were coming forward and it was like really fucking hard to prove anything because reed's story kept shifting depending on who she was talking to or what the timeline was yeah Mm. Yeah, because uh, uh, of course we we can't ever tell like like a hundred percent. But uh, one thing that I would is what I would uh, that I would like for people to take away with that is like w when they called all those people who were on the campaign trail, like two thousand or was it ninety two thousand maybe? You remember when they first started investigating it or? Oh no! Uh, when the when she was on the campaign, when Tara Reid was on the campaign, or when she made when she said that it originally happened. Uh, um, uh, I I thought she was on the campaign with Biden, and that's when when it happened. Well, she was working as a staffer in his office. I think in 1993 is when she said it happened. Okay, okay. I thought she was on the camp campaign campaign no, trail. No, I misremembered. Uh, but like. I just imagine because I've I've not done exactly this, of course, but it's just it's just the most boring work that you can imagine, <laughs> and I don't think people get this. Like calling, like getting a list from your boss saying, "Yeah, here's just a hundred. Hey, here's a list of the hundred fifty people who worked there in ninety three, ninety four. Mm -hmm. All all of them." And it's like, yes, hello, I'm calling from the New York Times. Uh, we're investigating this. Do you remember anything? Well, I remember that uh, she she sure liked the coffee in the office, you know. Yeah, it's that's really hard to get an accurate picture of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so like you said, just uh, trying to draw conclusions about people's stories and like putting the threads together and uh, everything like that and uh, yeah just uh, i just want people to appreciate like how hard it is and how little like you can actually say as a, a, a news source as mm -hmm. well like you can't com just come out and say anything you have to be like okay we checked all this or i guess you don't have to but if you want to be credible in any sense yeah, you you really have to like deep dive if you're gonna do do a story like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, w one thing I was uh, curious about, like, uh, uh, did you start making those uh, in uh, investigation uh, videos for any particular reason? Um, I noticed that human tendency, people just read headlines. Um, I noticed that a lot of people were saying things like, um, a lot of these accusations are fake and not true and everything. And I know that most people don't even read through the whole thing. So I'm like, eh, fuck it. Let's actually like go through and, and read the entire thing so that we can get an idea of like what we think is happening. Yeah. Uh, do you, did you enjoy it? Um, that's a very morbid way of putting it, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> or did you did, maybe did you enjoy the like investigation part of it? Yeah, I mean, I I'm glad I did it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting uh, yeah. reading like the user res the responses to things and all that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, <laughs> enjoyed it. Uh, do you think uh, that's like a segment you're you're gonna 
uh, keep uh, doing? Um, I mean, probably. As often as men and women work together, there's probably always going to be like sexual assault or something. So. And uh, you, you you're gonna want to keep like uh, checking it or. Yeah, going over it. Yeah, as long as Republicans exist, there are going to be people accusing women of faking it. So, <laughs> it's probably worth plugging into things. Yeah. Yeah, so, li like, uh, sort of like you said, uh, people tend to take sides very quickly in these kind of affairs. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, Depending on if you like the person or not, yeah. So, what, what, do you, what do you think, uh, what do you think of these people, or, or what do you think their, their thought process is? Um, well, if there's a guy that I don't like, anything that's, like, bad about them is good, um, because it helps... Sorry, fuck. Um, um, because it helps like your narrative or whatever, I guess, right? So like, for instance, if you think that de Democrats or Republicans are evil as fuck and everything they do is evil and horrible, then as soon as an accusation comes out against them, it's basically proving your prior thoughts correct. So people are like happy about that, basically. Hmm? Um. Yeah, so I think those were like my questions. Here now, I just have some like. Maybe person per, like my personal opinions about some things that you talked about. Like I kind of wanted you to elaborate, like maybe a bit on. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, uh, I think, it, yeah, it was one of the investigation streams where you talked about uh, with chat. I think uh, filling the mood by asking, like, do you think we're gonna have sex tonight? Do you know. Uh huh. Um. So what I was thinking is that if you're that upfront, like you might kill the mood for like a second, but none of you will remember that in like two minutes, and then you'll both be more comfortable. Yeah, probably. Yeah. D do you, do you want to elaborate or? Um, just, no, yeah. I mean like I I mean I agree. It's better to ask and maybe have like a moment of awkwardness rather than rape somebody <laughs> or go through some like super obvious yeah i mean i generally am in favor of that yeah i think that getting clarification and everything ahead of time is generally a really good thing yeah i def i mean i yeah i agree uh, how's how's your uh, uh your own experiences with that went has it been like mostly positive or what do you think yeah i get i get everything like i have a lot of conversation up front i also think that like sexting is a good way of figuring out like how sexually compatible i'd be with somebody anyway like it can be a good indicator so generally like if i'm meeting somebody at an event usually we already know if we're planning on fucking or you know what our boundaries are and everything um so yeah i'm like very 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 upfront with all of that do you think it's about like um like why we're not more or i should ask why do you think we're just not more open as as a race of human beings um rejection hurts and you're scared that if you ask ahead of time you're gonna get a no and nobody wants to hear no so that'd be like my guess for as to why guys don't do it it's also not talked about much like generally in like movies or pop culture usually these things are all done like immediately in the moment and it's super romantic and awesome and that's usually how people view them so do you think that's a problem with the uh, sex ed or like a cultural, like you said, with movies uh, kind of thing? Yeah, I think it's a problem. I think, well, well I don't know. Um, that's a really hard one. I'm not sure. I'd have to think a lot about that because like on, in some ways, like in, in some ways, hmm. In some ways, it's good to have positive examples in media, but in other times, it's fun for things to be romanticized. It's funny. I remember um, there's a site that has online like erotic literature. It's called Literatica. And sometimes they have debates on the forums there where if you're reading a story, should the characters put on condoms in the story or have protected sex in the story? And it's kind of a weird thing. because It's like, okay, well, you're reading porn and you know that it's not real, but like, should they be practicing safe sex like in the story? And like some people are like, oh yeah, we should have these positive examples, like it should be good, you know? And then in other hands, it's like, well, okay, but like this is clearly fantasy. Like, do we really need to do this? Like, it's kind of strange. Um, yeah, I I'm not sure. I don't know. It's, it's a, like, like yeah. Uh, the, the conflict is that I, in my mind, I would hope that people could draw a distinction between the two, but realistically, maybe they can't. I would, I would have to think about it more to come up with like what, what good answer I would want, I guess, for this, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the... Uh, 
it it might have been the same stream where you you talked about uh, uh, other men setting the bar low. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I have a like uh, maybe maybe you've uh, had similar experiences, but I was this is years ago, but I was at a festival and uh, uh, I was uh, uh, just talking with a girl and things were going well, and we went back to like. Uh, the our tent. This is not going to get X-rated, by the way. Okay. Um, and and then she said, like when while we were in the tent um, making out, she was like, "Oh, I think I'm in love with this guy. I think I want to be with him instead." Uh, oh, I'm just really confused. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, oh, "Okay, yeah, the that's that's fine. Let's go back to the party or whatever." And then she proceeded to. Like, for the next hour or so, just going, oh, you must be so angry with, with me. Oh, oh, you must be, oh, you must think I'm so horrible, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, <laughs> I think you're, I think you're fine. Like, mm -hmm. you express your feelings and that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, like, have you, have you had the, those similar sort of experience where girls are just shocked that you're a decent human being? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's really, really, really sad. Yeah. Um, the one, the one that was somewhat recent is I remember that I was talking to a girl and um, <clears throat> we'd obviously we talked a lot about hooking up beforehand. Like that was obviously the plan. Uh, but like, obviously, plans can change, or sometimes people can feel comfortable or not comfortable, just depending on what's going on. Um, and I remember that we were both hanging out on our bed chatting for a while, um, and it was pretty clear that she was like pretty nervous. Um, and if somebody's nervous, like, we don't have to do anything. Like, it's okay. I don't have, like, that. Like, if we don't, I'm going to be super mad. And I remember at one point, she, like, almost started crying. She's like, oh, like, I'm really sorry. Like, I'm so nervous. Like, give me, like, five minutes, and then, like, we can do this. Like, I'm sorry. And I was like, dude, like, holy shit. Like, it's okay. We don't have to do anything. Um, yeah, statements like that are pretty sad to me. Like, you can tell that the person has been, like, ultra super pressured sometimes before to do stuff. And it's like, holy shit. Um, yeah. Uh, and the amount of, like, girls at, or women, I should say, that have, or girls and women, that have uh, gotten, like, like, normal, just normal people mm -hmm. getting stalkers. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, was, I was at a party recently, and, like, four of the girls there had gotten, like, stalkers who either, you know, were, like, handymen, and they came to fix the sink, and then they, like, oh, I'm in your area, haha. <laughs> I'm outside your door, like sending the girl a picture of their door. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I'm outside. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I think, I'm. I'm just shocked, like at how people think it's okay to, to do that. Act. Yeah. Or <laughs> I don't know. Do Do you think people think that it's romantic? No, I think it's just a proximity thing. People are like, oh, like this person's close, they're convenient. I've got access, and then they start making moves. Yeah. Lot, I think the guys like, treat it a lot like selling a car where you, you're doing literally anything you can to get a yes. Like, what can I do? What can I do to send you home in this car today, right? And you're like, ah, I don't really know if I want to buy this today. It's like, well, hold on, okay? I can cut the price on this in half. I can throw in this thing. I can upgrade your trim for free. I can throw in, you know, like this insurance at a discount. Like, why don't you want to drive home in this car today? Like, it's and basically as long as the opportunity is there, people will push as hard as they can to kind of like close the sale. Is how people treat it. Yeah, I, I, because I feel like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of just not fun going on, which, uh, which I'm very surprised. Like sex and. And stuff should be fun, right? And there's just a lot of that, like debating, I guess. Um, I kind of wonder that. I'm not sure. It's like a lot, I feel like I luck into like a lot of my positions, unfortunately, because um, I don't know how I would be otherwise. But like for me, for instance, like yeah, like if I'm having sex with somebody, like they have to be into it. Otherwise, it's just it's not fun for me. Like I like um, this sounds stupid to say, but like raping somebody for me, like it would just be the most miserable experience ever. Like I, like if you're not having fun, like I just it's, I I don't enjoy it at all. Um, and it seems weird to me that people can push people into these areas where they're so uncomfortable. Like you have to be like it's got to be like a pretty selfish mindset, I think. To know that the other person is like not really into it or not feeling it and you're just going for it anyway like that seems very strange to me i don't know yeah i agree uh and you um you said something about like um 
very sex positive people online tend to be like I don't want to say prudes, but prudes uh, in real life. No, well, uh, well, let's clarify our terms. Not sex positive people, but people yeah, that yeah, exhibit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, people that exhibit like very hot or very sexy auras. Oh, Melina's in chat. We've talked about this before. That you see like a lot of people online that are very sexy, very hot, try very hard to like put that image forward. But then when you talk to them in real life, they actually like are they have very very little sex and they seem to not care that much about it at all. That's very fucking weird to me. But it seems to be like a, an exceedingly common experience that I have. It's like very strange. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, and just to clarify, I didn't mean sex, sex positive mm -hmm. in, in that way. Yeah, you, gotcha. Yeah. Damn. Um, awesome this is. Sorry, this is an old save I have. I was a god at this game at one point. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Are you playing? Um, a game called RimWorld. RimWorld? Never heard of it. Yeah, okay, sorry, go uh, ahead. <laughs> it's fine. Um,. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. So an another thing that I heard some people say, like over the course of these three years that I've witnessed, mm -hmm. uh, um, was that people say, uh, uh, "Destiny talks like he knows everything." Mm -hmm. It's a phrase that I've heard uh, thrown out a bunch of times, and I, th I think this is another instance where I don't really get it because. Wouldn't I don't know exactly how to phrase this question, but like in in uh, to me at least, like in my mind, I feel like yes, I have the correct opinions, so I I want to share these. Uh, but do you think that people like project their own uh, uh, insecurities lack of or... knowledge onto? Yeah, I think you people project case? people project a lot. I didn't think originally that people did this because it seems very immature and stupid. But yeah, I guess people do actually project a lot. Um, I mean, like, I think the problem is that like I take a strong stance on a lot of things. So people are like, oh, well, there's no way that he can know, you know, anything about um, anything about this or that or that. And I am wrong sometimes; it happens. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I spend all day online like arguing and debating shit. So of course, I have a lot of strong opinions about a lot of different things. Um, and maybe people just assume that yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because, uh, like, for uh, example, for for me would be like uh, I when I put on music and uh, at like a party, mm -hmm. and uh, then so, oh, there's been you Dante, you've played a lot of uh, songs now. Do you think you have the best music taste in the world? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> don't 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 you. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Don't you? Think it's that very, you have the best music. It's very hard that you have to be careful crossing that line from, um, like having high confidence into being a little bit narcissistic. But yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, and uh, another another thing like uh, connected to that would be like you when when you put forth your views and uh, like fairly strongly. Mm -hmm. Um, isn't isn't that basically like an attempt to like, you you I, I at least assume this but i assume that most people want other people to be like you are or at least i feel like that i don't think that's like, true i think a lot of people are really insecure mm -hmm. have you ever heard of um it's really old have you ever heard of something called transactional analysis uh no there, um, so this guy theorized that there are like, um, I don't even remember the name of the guy, but that there are like four states of like the human mind. So one is like, I'm okay. Uh, or, or I think the default one is like, I'm not okay, you're okay. And then there's like, I'm okay, you're okay. There's I'm okay, you're not okay. And there's I'm not okay, you're not okay. We were like the four broad basic ones. And his theory was that most people were stuck in the I'm not okay, you're okay mind state, where basically you have your own insecurities and problems, but you assume that everybody else has their shit together. Um, so I, I think like if that's the case, I think most people are worried that their problems will show through to other people and that everybody else kind of has you know, most of their stuff together, like pretty hardcore, kind of like how, like when you go on social media, you assume everybody else has a perfect life because they're only posting like the best pictures from their lives. And yeah. That's interesting. I never heard about that theory. 
And it's I, I think it's outdated as fuck. I don't think people use it actively, but I, just like I remember that from that. That it's and that seems to be a pretty common experience that most people. We live in this weird, like, very liberal world. Um, sometimes it's kind of strange that like everybody wants to be an individual and everybody wants to stand out, but you don't want to stand out too much because you want to be kind of the same as everybody else. You don't want to be that unique that people are like looking at you. You know, you want to be like the best of the most normal things you can have. So like you want to have the best clothes and the most unique clothes, but only in so far as they're unique that everybody else wants them. If that makes sense, it's like a really weird world that we kind of like live in. I think sometimes. So. Mm. What what do you what do you think that is, or what what how do you think the world became that way, or society? Uh, that's there's like there's that's probably the intersection of like twenty different areas between yeah, yeah. evolution really, and economics uh, yeah. and sociology and religion yeah there's probably a whole bunch of different things that like like i can think i can think of a couple reasons why but i doubt it explains fully there's probably like 20 different things that yeah go into that yeah i, th I think may i i could probably argue from like a maybe like a cultural sense and like a economic and like a consumer sense but there's probably like like you said 18 other aspects to it uh yeah that's a that's a sort of omega question that i'm not gonna lay on you right now mm -hmm. um, um yeah uh, so yeah uh another thing was um what i've seen you do uh, a lot and uh, you you caveat like a lot of things. Yeah, I even did it in real life, and it really irritates people. Yeah, I've gotten into the habit of it. Yeah. Oh, you, you do it in real life too. Uh, like how? Um, like in just in really bad ways. Like somebody might ask me, like Molina might say, like, oh, like, um, are we gonna go to like, do you want to go to Japan in a year? And I'll say like, yeah, I think like hopefully we can. And she's like, what do you mean hopefully? It's like, well, we have to assume that I haven't lost my job. We have to assume that we're still going to be together. We have to assume that both of us are still going to be able to travel. Like, I, like I usually try to think of things in terms of like what, like what answer can I give such that if it gets clipped in the future, somebody's not going to like, oh well, you said this, and but it's like, well, okay, well, but obviously, so I end up over caveating a lot of stuff, and a lot of people in my personal life complain that I do it too much, and it kind of sucks the fun out of a lot of questions, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. what people hear generally is like, if somebody says like, can we do something in a year? They're not even thinking about like breaking up. And the fact that you even have that on your mind you, to a lot of people illustrates like, oh, okay, well, what are you like thinking about this now? Are you planning on doing this? I was like, well, no, but I mean like, obviously it could happen. I have to keep it in mind, right? One of us might do something stupid or fucked up or whatever, yeah. But, but even just saying that, even like verbalizing that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Mm. Um, it, it might come back to the, the other stuff about just being honest, like with your expectations and uh, your uh, desires and stuff mm -hmm. so is that um, uh, so it, it's it's taxing on other people do you feel like it's taxing for for you no i'm used to it at this point i don't care about clarifying well no yeah, no, I think I'm used to it. I guess it'd be nice not to, but I'm so used to it. I don't think it like weighs on me. Like I've never had a thing where it's like, God, I wish I could just like not have to over caveat. But it seems like I do it online, and I still get like misquoted and everything anyway. So <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, that was uh, like the follow up question that uh, ninety percent of the statements you make feel like that. If you say, oh, you can probably afford a, f a five dollar sub. And then you have to go on like a ten minute spiel <laughs> on what, what why that is. Yeah, and then I get like people misquote the fuck out of like everything I say anyway to such a level where it's like if you know who I am and you know what I'm saying, like it's pretty obvious what I'm getting at. So like for instance, like I got into a debate a while ago with some crazy Vietnamese person, and she was saying um, like, oh well, the only, like we basically it was a broad argument of like why is it. Um, why is it that capitalism is better than socialism? And one of the arguments she brought up is, well, every time a country tries to be socialist, capitalists go and destroy that country. And like my response is like, okay, well, if I have to choose between being in a capitalist country or in a socialist country that's getting destroyed by capitalist countries, I feel like I'd want to be in the capitalist country. Like I don't want to die. I don't want my family to die. So that seems like an argument to not become a socialist country if you're going to get blown up by capitalist ones. And people took this clip of that and they posted it on Twitter. Her boyfriend posted it on Twitter. And she said, Destiny making fun of Vietnamese people saying that they deserved to be napalmed by America. And I was like, holy shit, that's where you're going to go with that one? Jesus, fuck. Like, yeah, so people do dumb shit like that all the time. It's like, whatever. Mm, yeah, that's the uh, non-compete one, right? Yes, God, I fucking hate that guy. What a fucking moron. They all are, though, but sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Maybe you don't want to name names, but like, who do you think are morons? Everybody that does online politics is a moron, with very, 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 very limited exception. Most of the people that do politics online probably shouldn't have political voices. Um, like, mo- like most of their opinions are totally baseless. They don't go through like any fucking even like basic research on any of their positions. Um, there's like two or three people. Um, <clears throat> I still respect Sam Cedar. I think he's a cool guy. I think David Pakman has a lot of like hands-on like political stuff. Um, and then for like lefty people, there's a guy called Vosh that does like a lot of unique research and everything, and actually seems to be decently read on like his policy positions. But outside of that, almost everybody in like the the YouTube or Twitch political world is horrendously fucking uninformed on fucking everything. It's like unimaginable how fucking stupid most of these people are. It's unreal. Uh, do you know anything about socialism? Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. So, like, as an example, a big YouTube or a big Twitch streamer recently got in trouble because he can't pay any of his workers any money, even though this guy makes like a million dollars a year. And of course, he's a socialist, but he we won't pay anybody to do any work for him. Um, he constantly oh, chips on it. Yeah. And I remember he said um, he had some editor that did some work for him. And he's like, oh well, I bought like a computer for this guy, so he owns the means of production. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? Like, oh my god, why would you say? Wait, so do you have you know nothing about socialism this whole time? What are you talking about? The means of production are the YouTube channel, not a fucking computer. Oh my god, yeah, like people say shit like that and it, it blows my mind. I'm like astounded. I'm like, what the fuck? Um, and it feels that way about so many. Um, there are a lot of smaller political streamers that are like decently smart or whatever, but in terms of the big ones, most people are unironically just completely fucking clueless and it blows my mind. I'm like, holy shit. Man, feels feels good to be a capital owner, I guess. Um, what for? What, what do you mean by that? Because I own a computer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess. so. Oh, yeah. We're all capitalists <laughs> at the end of the day. Jesus. Yeah. At the end of the day, capitalism was the... Com- ah, never mind. <laughs> was inside of all of us. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the true uh, capitalism with uh, the computers maybe, we made like, along the way. In the, like, fucking meta way that we're the means of production or, like, human labor. So, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. That's right. Um, <clears throat> have you have you read uh, have you read the Communist Manifesto? No, it's pretty short though, right? Like fifty or sixty pages. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no, I haven't though. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Or like the, uh, it's, it's so catchy. You know the the first line: uh, a specter is haunting uh, Europe. The specter of capitalism. Yeah. Uh, man, that sounds good. <laughs> I mean, it was literally made to be read by a peasant like person, right? Like, that was the whole point of the com. Of, it, it was like the calling card or to get like the average person more interested in, in communism and socialism, right? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But the. I kind of noticed because I read the. I can't remember what it's called, but I read the Engels, like, um, um, his own sort of uh, manifesto. I can't remember what it's called, but it's so so funny to me because you you see who who like the theorician was and who like the practical person was in the both uh, in the both texts. Like Marx just want, wanting to go on and on and on and on and on, and Engels being like, "Well, the social democrats aren't very good for the communist cause." Sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I can recommend it if you have it. it it's like maybe two hour read or something. Uh, it's pretty funny, mm-hmm. or it's an in- entertaining read in uh, any way. Okay. Um, oh yeah, uh, w- with the with the caveats, you said you're very used to it, mm-hmm. uh, both in real life and um, online. But like, have having to do it online to not. Uh, like to cover your own ass like do you do you just not want to do it after a while um i mean it'd be nice if people were like a little bit more charitable into like reading what i was saying rather than assuming the most fucked up crazy shit possible but i mean what i mean there's not much i can do about that um so my last topic Sort of is um, um, sort of what what to bring to a debate or what if I were a debater mm-hmm. on Twitch or YouTube like what I would bring 
uh, personally. And it, it it does has to do with like watching a person's content beforehand to know like their thought process. But in my mind, if you want to uh, win, quote a debate, I would bring an argument that's most likely to work on person X. Like may, maybe uh, uh, maybe this doesn't work as often in real life, but on YouTube I see it like as a prerequisite. Uh, what what do you think? What can you give me an example, or what do you mean by that? Or can you expand on that one? Yeah. So so if um, a good example is uh, Vosh, um, uh -huh. uh, he debated vegan gains like a couple of years ago now, probably. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that they they were talking over each other because vegan gains doesn't see like labor as inherently problematic. Yeah, wage uh, labor. Yeah. And, yeah. And Vosh didn't see, like, uh, 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 whatever product I buy, I still, uh, the worker still suffers, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I would do, would, like, say to Vosh in that case, would be like, ah, oh, so if you take an animal's uh, suffering, and or the animal, that's one part labor, and then you have one human laborer who has to slaughter the animal, and in the other case, you would have a human not slaughtering an animal and uh, uh, called harvesting crops just instead. So that's one less labor uh, being exploited. Sure, you're trying to make it so basically you're trying to reduce whatever argument you have into the terms that the other person would more empathize with. Yeah, I tried this with um, there was a guy I debated called Bryson, a, like a black turning point USA guy or whatever. And um something that I try to do with some Republicans, I do this with my mom a lot, is I try to speak in terms of patriotism um, or words that they value. Oh, like I was arguing with my mom on text the other day, and like um, usually when I'm talking to her about Trump, usually I'll use words like, um, um, like I was saying like, oh, like a man should lead the country. You know, a leader should be like a strong man or whatever, and Trump isn't. You know, I usually try to speak in those words. Personally, I, I don't think of it that way, but I know that it's effective for the other person because they usually start to get very emotional and frustrated. Um, or like with the Bryson guy, I was speaking in terms of like, like I'll, I'll, if I if I start off saying like, I think America is the best country in the world. We're an exceptional country. We should be able to destroy things like the coronavirus way better than those shitty European countries. Why aren't we doing it? It's very hard when you frame it that way for the other person to attack you now you're speaking in their language and it's pretty obvious that america is not the best when it comes to dealing with sars cov2 so like they have to like wrestle with it in their own terms and it makes it hard for them yeah yeah yeah. i think that's a very fair I, I personally i think it's an effective way of dealing with people yeah why do you think people don't do that more most people are incapable of escaping their their own like cognitive paradigms like people see the world their way and they are it's very hard for them to even conceive of looking at some things differently i think i think a lot of people have that problem I notice that a lot because sometimes I'll talk to people and I try to talk in terms of like things that they understand or from their point of view and people will ask me like, well, I thought you believed this, Destiny, or why are you saying that? You don't believe that. And it's like, okay, sure, but like I'm trying to like put it in ways that they understand. Yeah. That, that That's actually a fun uh, a fun thing to me at least, like uh, how people um, um, uh, call you uh, like basically callous uh, sometimes. Yeah, I come off as very cold oftentimes, which I understand yeah. is fair. But it's it's just funny to me because when at least for me looking at it from the outside and I, I, I watch a lot of different creators so like I watch um, uh, Sargon, Vosh, Hassan, you you know I try to get as much information from people as I can mm -hmm. uh, just to see and like I feel like you're by far the most empathetic person <laughs> I've ever seen on YouTube at least. Um, thanks. I mean, I, I try to be, but, um, yeah. and, uh, I think it's just weird that other people can't see that because you come off as like a dick sometimes to them. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But what are you going to do? Uh, yeah. So, uh, oh, right. Um, uh, about the, uh, the, the, the streamers, like I I you were talking about, or a lot of those guys, it seems like has some uh, alcohol issues. Uh, and a lot of them blamed 
some behavior on like blacking out and stuff. Uh, I think you said that you you've never had a blackout drunk episode. I haven't. I've gotten very fucking drunk before, but I know that everybody deals with it differently. For me personally, I don't. I haven't found any drug I've blacked out on yet. I haven't tried like GHB or whatever, or like any of the date rape drugs or anything. But um, yeah, personally, it, I mean, I'm sure there's some level of alcohol I could drink where I would black out, but I haven't gotten there yet. But I have gotten very, very, very wasted. Um, but I also I. It's hard for me to say because I don't know how people do with it. I don't. I don't believe that any normal human being gets blackout drunk after like three drinks or four drinks. And I also don't believe that. I feel like it's hard to imagine that you could get blackout drunk and like walk around and everything like perfectly fine. Like that seems pretty strange too. Like I know some firsthand accounts where people say they were blackout drunk, but I remember this person like walking people to an Uber, calling cabs, and like doing things that were like pretty like sober. And it's like, hmm, okay, I don't know about that one, but. Yeah, it, it was just because, um, like, in my, in, I'm uh, turning 30, mm -hmm. but, like, in my early 20s, uh, I was a, like, big-time alcoholic, um, and I was, basically, I brought a bottle of whiskey, like, uh, 70 centiliters, I don't know what that is in, mm -hmm. is that a quart? I, I don't know. Well, that that would be the same thing? <laughs> no, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, like uh, I would drink an entire bottle of whiskey at a party, uh, mm -hmm. like not thinking about it, and then blacking out, like basically every time, like basically every party. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing is, like, like you said, I think that like a couple of drinks, three drinks, I think no, um, and like calling an Uber also probably no, because what people said to me at least was that it's like and i've seen other people who get like this as well mm -hmm. is that it, they tend to like zone out and you know like there's nothing there um so like there's no there's no thought process behind the eyes like you can walk around and stuff sure the other uh, other than that there's like no there's no uh, what do you call it? Cognition going on mm -hmm. at all? Um, so yeah, I think uh, so. Can sort of believe when they say they get blackout drunk, but then it also seems to be way too um, handy for them to like. Oh, I was blackout drunk when I passed out in the bed and accidentally blackout drunk laid my hands on your titties. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because. Uh, it, it would probably not be that it was it would probably like screaming at a person and like passing out all clothes on in the bed yeah uh, yeah i don't know i try i try to i just i try to stay away from like trying to make statements of what people would or wouldn't do but more just like i think that there are like usually there are things that we can do to avoid these situations and that's probably the most important thing to look at that's where the responsibility comes so like for instance i genuinely believe that like you probably can't help yourself but get into a car accident if you're super drunk like that's believable but you probably shouldn't be anywhere near getting into your car if you are super drunk you know yeah uh, but i i feel like uh like there there are two things that People use blackout drunk as an excuse, and then they do fairly, you know, sober behavior anyway. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and and then there's um, like either if you were blackout drunk or not, like you were there, it's your fault. Uh, it feels like it it comes back to the uh, to the topic we had before when people go. But I was blackout drunk, mm -hmm. and how that's not really an excuse, really, yeah. uh, because you know you were there. Mm -hmm. um, right? Yeah, uh, I think that's all of my uh, questions for today. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, well, thanks for chatting. If you ever have any questions or anything you want to chat about, you can reach out and let me know. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything you want to ask me? Um, you said you're a journalism student right now? Uh, third year. Gotcha. Um, I, what do you want to do for work? Uh, right now, I work for uh, uh, Swedish National Radio. Okay. I was I on a... Think... 
So I was on a fairly popular Swedish radio program show. They did like a quick interview with me. I don't remember what it was called. I might have some Swedish friends in chat. I feel like you'd heard of them, but oh, P3. Does that sound like a real thing? Yeah, that's it's part of Swedish national radio. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did an interview for them before. Yeah. I think I'm on their Instagram cool. somewhere, but yeah, that's all I know about Swedish anything. <laughs> that and Melina. Yes. Yeah, and Melina. Well, I mean, I know a lot of Swedish people, I guess. Nim is a Swedish streamer. My ex lives in near Malmo. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a few Swedish dudes, yeah. yeah. I think the, the a problem with the P3 is that a big thing has been, historically, has been that people or like youths listen to p3 mm -hmm. then they go over to p4 which is like like p3 is for the kids trademark with a z on the end okay. then e4 is more like for the boomer crowd or like when you start having children and stuff mm -hmm. um, and like buy a house but now the problem is that uh, people or kids aren't listening to p3 anymore really so mm -hmm. the demographic isn't being filled up from the bottom, if you know what I mean. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's a that's a big problem right now for uh, Swedish national radio, and, and there's a big like discussion going on on how to modernize and change it to be more appealing and stuff. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. But we have really good like documentaries. I, I'm sure if Melina is in chat, she's probably heard. Um, a, a creepy poddon is really good and uh creepy <laughs> shout pod? The Swedish. Yeah, yeah creepy the, the creepy podcast basically oh. uh, it's like uh, uh taking creepy pastas and doing like a little radio show slash documentary huh. uh, it's uh, super popular but the thing is that people aren't listening to radio they're listening to it like on other platforms uh, uh, exactly. Do you have something called iHeartRadio in Sweden or no? Uh, I, d I don't think I've heard of it. Okay. In America, it's like an online thing, but they like syndicate a bunch of radio programs, basically, so you can listen to it online and shit. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh uh, I was curious, because I've, I haven't really talked to any Americans about this. Uh, how do you feel about NPR? Like, um, I like they, it. I think they do uh, a lot of good work. Hmm. Are they like a trustworthy source? Do you think? Yeah, I think they generally do pretty good reporting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, are, are they? Um, um, how does it work? Like, are they government funded, but uh, not? Uh, what do you call it? Not government. But still, um, um, I don't know uh, how it works exactly because they do like fundraisers and stuff a lot, so they don't get enough funding, or they don't get all their funding, I guess, from government money, but. I think for the most part, I think they do pretty good work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, hey, thanks. If you have any questions or anything in the future, yeah, feel free to shoot me an email. We can chat again. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, I remembered. Um, mm -hmm. My girlfriend thinks you're super handsome with the f uh, full beard you have nowadays. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye editor should have gotten a contract it sounds like you should have gotten something in writing it sounds like blah 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 and it's like ah oh, <laughs> that's an interesting take there my fellow communists